Despite what their moms told them, they just aren't talented enough for radio. Unfortunately, anyone can have a show these days. Sean. Well, I'm pretty hard to figure out sometimes. But I can't even figure myself out sometimes, so don't you try to. Joe. You're an idiot. And really, a disloyal person. This, this is the Cuse Militia. Those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. It's the most bullshit thing I've seen in 30 years. Welcome, orange men and ladies. Happy Sunday. This is the QC Militia with Sean and Joe. At QC Militia on the socials, go there. Join the Militia live on X Spaces for the final segment of each show. Syracuse falls below 500 at 5-6 and six in a 31-22 loss down in Atlanta. They lost the game. They lost their coach, Dino Babers. Uh, last game was last night. And uh, we will join the group of schools that are uh, on the riding the coaching carousel, I suppose. And we'll uh, have to deal with that and see what we got coming up. But there's a, there's a short list of names that I've been seeing floating around. And... I don't know really what to think about them, but you know, and uh, 19 points unanswered for Syracuse to get them themselves back in the game, and just a really um, valiant effort. I know valiant efforts don't always win games, but it was uh, a no quit kind of attitude. And if you watch the presser or listen to the presser after the game. And saw LaQuint, like, he's ready to go, and uh, he's not going to let this bother him. We got one more game to try to get bowl eligible, and it's a winnable game. We'll see what things look like as um, <coughs> we go into the Wake Forest game. Uh, Nunzio, N- what's his name? N- the interim head coach. Interim head Nunzio. coach. Nunzio. I'm going to say Nunzio, Nunzio yeah. Campanelli. Yeah, That's Campanelli. Let's time. just call him Campanelli. Um Call him Coach Camp. Yeah. So uh, we'll see what things look like, whether they stick with what they've been doing or we try to go more of a traditional route with Wake Forest. I mean, you know, I'm not real sure, you know, um, what that's going to look like. I thought it would have been a little bit better last night, being that Georgia Tech is really not great at stopping the run. But at the end of the day, when – you make yourself one-dimensional, and it's all a team defense has got to focus on. It um, it changes the dynamic quite a bit, and you know I think we saw some of that. And not for anything, Georgia Tech's game plan was was pretty decent. I mean, they came out and uh, went down, scored a touchdown on their first drive, um, and then stopped us to attempt a field goal and. I mean, what are you going to do? No, yeah. no, there was a lot of grit there because, you know, like we spoke about before, um, you know, Georgia Tech, that was pretty much their last, you know, hurrah as far as being able to. Um, oh, they weren't going to get bowl eligible if they didn't win that game. Right, exactly. So, I mean, they were, they were playing as hard as they possibly could to get that W. Um, and, you know, obviously I think that, you know, just some mistakes, you know, Kind of, kind of hurt us there. You know, there's a couple, couple big plays on defense and some bad penalties on offense that put us too far back um, to be able to legitimately, you know, get first downs when you know we were running the offense that, that we were. So you can't get you can't get offensive penalties on first and second down when all you're going to do is run the ball. Right. And I know we can sit here and criticize the last. Well, we'll get into it. You know what? Let's do it now. Because yep. I, I don't want this to be look, I don't want this game to be a huge conversation. And fan feedback is obviously not going to be bad about the game. I don't have um, any any. I suppose I could post something right now, like I did last time. We'll get something, but um, you know, most of it calls for Dino you know, to be fired or a change. And well, that that's been done. So you know, there's no real sense in going in and talking about fan feedback as far as. As far as this Georgia Tech game goes, so right, um, we'll we'll dive in a little bit here. Um, but this is Coach's last press conference uh, that he's going to do for Syracuse, and we got to cut up and ready for you to listen to. Let's see what he had to say. 
Uh, obviously disappointed. Uh, hat goes off to Coach Key. That was a good, good football game against a good, good football team. They have some extremely explosive players. And, uh, you know, congratulations. They're going to get an opportunity to go bowling. We hope that uh, we have that same opportunity. We have one more game left at our place. We're going back to the Dome. we got to play a really good Wake Forest team that we've had trouble with over the years. We expect our, our people to be there, and we expect them to be loud and crazy and to send our seniors off the right way. And uh, there's no place like Dome, and we can't wait to get back there. He knows our two-minute offense the best out of the quarterbacks that are healthy to run it. So that was, it was just like a two-minute drill and yeah. he was the most yeah. veteran. Braden played kind of in the role that we saw Garrett in last week, just a little, I guess, less. What led to him playing there versus letting Garrett play like he did last week? Some of those guys are not as healthy. We're still waiting for those guys to get healthy so they can uh, do the things that they're used to doing. So Garrett, would you say Garrett was less healthy this week than he had been playing last yes. week? Yes. Coach, why did it take till the fourth quarter to try a pass more than 10 yards? <laughs> because some of the other stuff was really good, and sometimes we didn't have the ball. You know, our big thing is we're going to run the football. We're going to keep the ball in the hands of our people that we think are good. We did throw a lot of passes. We're not trying to throw them less than 10 yards. We just got tackled before we could get to 10 yards. So when we throw that, we expect them to go all the way just like the runs. Coach, before that final interception, nine penalties for 70 yards. So one part of the game that you think was contributing to that most? There was a lot of uh, stuff going on out there. Or what you guys call it, the business. There was a lot of people giving each other the business out there. And sometimes the referees see it and sometimes they don't. There were some things that I was surprised the referees saw because they normally don't see that stuff. So that my hats go off for them for some of that stuff. And there were some other things that happened that may not have been happening exactly how they saw it, but they called it that way. And that's part of the game. Uh, you guys came back from getting down 24 to 3 to make this a competitive game. What do you think about your team and able to just stay in even despite a big deficit like that? I think there's a lot of fight in this football team. And then when you when you think about how we've, we've gone to, uh, I'm not going to say that word. That's the words I don't say because I'm a military kid. The things that we've had to do in the last two games to be able to move the ball and score points and for them to be able to understand that that's a disadvantage, and but we're going to turn it into an advantage and we're going to turn a negative and turn it into a positive. I think they've been in obviously both games. We won one, we lost one, but the way they're fighting and the way they're competing and staying together, I think I'm really proud of them. Back-to-back -back weeks with a lot of work on your shoulders. How are you feeling? I'm ready to go to war. Every week, every practice, I'm ready. You, I ain't, I ain't worried about being banged up. I'm ready to go to war with my guys. Before Dan was a tight end, he was a QB. You know, I had reps with Dan. I had reps with all those guys. You know, it's the same thing. You know, and Dan's a baller. I'm proud of him too. You know, for stepping up too. I think I believe. You know, in my heart, any offense, whatever the game plan is, I, I believe in my heart that it can work next week. You know, any week, we just gotta work on the little things. You know, and execute as a team, as one unit. You know, and take that step forward as a team. To be honest, the bowl game is not my standard. You know, my standard is ACC championship. So, um, I just that that that's what we we can get now. So we have to get that. That's the bare minimum in my eyes. Um, so I, I think it'll mean a lot for these seniors. And uh, you know, I want to play two more. I want to play two more games for sure. I don't want to just play this last one. And uh, yeah, I think we definitely got to do it for this coaching staff because they deserve it and for these seniors. All right, well, we, you know, we were all wondering why is, is Garrett not out there assuming his normal role um, if, if most of his issues were with throwing. We've seen him come in take a kneel. He came in for a sneak. You know, he did the bare, bare minimum. And... You know, the response was, well, he's not as healthy this week as he was last week. So, um, you know, the game plan, the strategy on paper seemed like it was a great idea to do this again and almost inevitably going to be more successful than it was. Although, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't bad, but it's just like when, when you have to have something more than 
just relying on the run. They put themselves in a couple of holes. Joey and I talked. Amari Hatcher had the double penalty. Ended up being like first and 25. You're, you're not going to come out of that with by running the ball. You know, there was the last play of the game offensively for Syracuse was, you know, a, a, a picked off pass. They, play, they say, okay, well, it's time to run the two-minute offense. I got an idea. Let's throw Luke McPhail in there and put the whole entire game on his shoulders and have him try to save the day. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. That's why I'm so, I'm so confused. Like, should they, would they, could have done that earlier? Yeah. I mean, is there, is there not another real option? What's going on with Carlos Del Rio Wilson? I mean, is, is that, was it totally, is it, you know, unheard of to say, you know, maybe throw him in? Um, you have these situations first in 25. I mean, it seems like, a, you know, maybe run first down, but you got to, you're going to get in a passing situation at some point. Without it, we just weren't. Um, we just weren't effective. The defense did uh, a pretty good job. Some some lapses on defense. It's going to happen. But um, a missed opportunity on, on fourth down. Sparrow got in a neutral zone. And, you know, and then they got burned for 53-yard touchdown. And some blown coverage just looked like some confusion out there. And so that's going to happen. But if it weren't for them, well, if it weren't for a full team effort, the 19-point um, – the 19 unanswered points, you know, it's not going to happen. But I, I don't really have much to say about the game. I mean, it wasn't even I – was, I, was, I got excited. I thought there was a chance. They didn't make the two-point conversion okay, but Georgia Tech goes down and scores, and then, you know, now it's nine points, and that's, that's right. that. I don't know why I put Luke McPhail in at that point. I'm not sure. You need two scores. Um, maybe just to – get him out there and see what he can do. He, the coach said that he was the one um, out of all the quarterbacks that can run. The he knew two the minute, two, two minute offense. Yeah. The best, out the of, best out of the right? ones that were available. Correct. Right. right. And, you know, we did try to get the, the, the receivers more involved. I mean, we definitely threw the ball more. Valari was 14 to 14, albeit only 59 yards. Um, so it's better than DeVito right now, currently, but, um, yeah, no, they we expected that. I didn't expect them to, you know, fall fall that far behind so fast and I ain't gonna lie to you, I was kinda like, All right, Georgia Tech wants this, they need it for the bowl and I felt like, you know, they're probably I, th- I felt like it was going towards the way of like the Virginia Tech game. And oh. you know, they completely turned it around in the second half and got me excited and, you know, again, the quit or, you know, not quitting and, and everything like that. The team playing hard, I mean it's it's obviously we we have some issues obviously we have some issues with our depth in certain places and injuries and there's only i mean we're we're limited on what we can do effectively um so with knowing that and being realistic about the players that we have on our team i thought it was a great effort to get back into the game that was a tremendous effort to get back in the game by by that's why i said it was a full team effort i mean you're in defensive stops i think there was a couple three and outs Syracuse uh, if, as effective as they could be on offense. You know, you come out of the second half and Gill loses the ball, and they 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 you know they tack on seven after that. I mean, you take that. I mean, I know we're playing a what if game right now, but you yeah, t- yeah, yeah, yeah. you take that out of the equation, and Syracuse plays like that. This is who knows what happens. But if it's in butts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a merry Christmas. It doesn't matter. But it's the little things like that and it's not necessarily a little thing but hanging on to the ball is just you know he's out there kind of in that role for the first time I thought he did a tremendous job he lost the ball I mean shit's gonna happen but unfortunately it's stuff like that when you're playing the way you're playing in the situation you're in where that could be the game I mean you could point to a number of things and say well that could have been the game you know the missed two-point conversion I feel like you tie the game right there and I mean, the, all of the momentum is a different. Is, game. I, yep. it, yeah, because because after they missed that, it was like ah oh, shit. You know, some some air was deflated out of that balloon, and um, you know, had they had they got that two point conversion, I feel like you know things are a little bit different. But you know, we'll never know. Uh, it, it is what it is. If you asked me two weeks ago, even after um, even after the pit game, 
I don't think we beat Georgia Tech. I don't know what the decision on Dino Babers hinged on. Like, well, if you go and win out, you're not going to get fired. Because it seems to me that either that was the thought process or, you know, I just don't know why. Why not do it after the the five-game losing streak if you're going to do it? You know, it, the whole thing doesn't make sense to me. I, I, I don't need a farewell game or anything like that. But to finish up the season for the for the staff and for the kids, I feel like is is a is one thing. I understand you want to get a jump on the uh, the um, you know the open spot you know for the head coach, obviously, which is my point of me saying why not just do it after the five game losing streak or after the four game losing streak. Yeah. I mean, I know what I mean? I I just, and in the way they do it is just so bang, bang. And I don't need like a big ticker tape parade or anything, but I'm just saying, I, I, you look at Bayheim and you look at that and I feel like, geez, there's real no, there's really no, like, doesn't seem like there's any real thought process behind it. No. And again, a story leaked and the story leaked. Yeah. So, um, someone's talking to Pete Thamel, so quite a bit. So I mean, someone in there's a mole, uh, or maybe maybe they maybe the mole is whoever is in charge. Who the hell knows? Most of the time it is, but I, I just don't. There's not. I mean, there's no rhyme or reason to it, man. I just I, I just feel some kind of way about it. You know, we we talked about this with Coach Beheim, and now we're doing we're kind of doing the same thing again. If you want to get a jump on the coach and carousel and you want to hop on that sucker, then you get rid of Babers three weeks ago. You don't you don't do it. It just doesn't make sense to do it now unless you just said, okay, well, win out and you get to – and we'll talk. But it just – Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me as well. Um, but at the same time, I think that it's kind of telling I, – I think it's – I think they wanted him gone based upon this move because. Oh yeah, totally. I feel like if they, I mean, next week is a very winnable game against Wake Forest. Um, I, I personally believe it's the worst team in AC, in the ACC, and that's with us not really having a quarterback. Um, and if he goes and they win that, and they go to a bowl game, then they win a bowl game. Then there's obviously the whole argument. He goes seven and six again, and if he wins a bowl game, then it'd be better than last year. And then it's like, oh, is he going to come back, right? And to be perfectly honest with you, um, then you kind of retain everybody. You know, you get your recruiting class coming in, which, again, is one of the better recruiting classes that we Dino's had in a, since he's been here. Um, and get some transfers in, figure out your quarterback situation. The next year's, um, next year's schedule is very manageable to where – you know, you can you could go and win eight nine games, and now you're talking about Dan, Dino's. Oh, he's going to get extended again, right? So to me, this was uh, before he can get any momentum or grasp any more momentum um, to, you know, have it an argument. Let's just do it now, which again just doesn't make any sense. Uh, I, I know do that they're going to come out and they're going to play hard. Those players they want to they yeah. want to make a bowl game and and, and everything like that. But um, this is just, I mean, nothing is is thought out. And Pete Thamel, by the way, Syracuse Newhouse graduate who works at uh, John Wildhack's former employee uh, employer, uh, ESPN. So, wait, say that again. Oh yeah, Pete that's Thamel. right. Yeah, Pete yeah, Thamel that's right. was the one that broke it. He's a Syracuse Newhouse graduate. Yeah, yeah. he works for ESPN, and that's where Wildhack came from. So, yeah, exactly. No, you're right. Um, and we can speculate. I mean, the whole fo- football aspect. When we sit here and podcast, is all speculation anyway, so why not speculate away? Because we don't get freaking answers about anything, so that leaves us to uh, conspiracy theorize. Um, do you think that much changes in this program, I mean, just on a surface level? Okay, I'm not asking you to get into, well, I don't know who's going to be the coach and all that stuff. I'm just talking on a surface level. You think anything mm-hmm. changes in the program um, if... If the only person that's leaving Syracuse University is the head coach, like you mentioned, we got a very manageable schedule next year, so you could bring someone in, and it could mask it could mask some things that would show up otherwise. Right. Well, yeah. So, for, and I wanted to touch this too, like you know, getting a head start on the coaching. Like, I don't think that coaches that are are. I mean. 
if you're a good coach in a smaller school, I know I saw I heard some people talk about the App State coach or like the the J, uh, James Madison coach or something. They're in the middle of the season, like coaching and stuff like that. So I mean, they're probably until bowl season. They're probably not worried about fielding calls about. No, you know, it's just a distraction. I mean, you got the Texas AMN coach, obviously. Yeah, but anybody else who's not coaching actively, I I know that you can talk to him whenever the yeah whenever the hell you want. Right? Yeah, I know. You don't need to get ahead of it. You could have been talking to him all year. Oh, that's um, very true. Yeah, Mendenhall kind of makes sense to me because he was the Virginia head coach, and Jason Beck um, came from there with well, Robert and I. Hill's walking off the field, by the way. What's that? Hill Tyreek Hill's walking off the field, and I think you have him in fantasy. Well, he already scored a touchdown. Um, That's all you needed? Just the one touchdown? I don't know. Um, But, again, I think that that's really the thing, right? We've seen them blow it up. I don't want to see that. Uh, I know that there's some, you know, older fans that have have seen this all before and and they want to to change and everything like that. And and there's the younger fans that are talking about, yeah, get rid of them, get rid of them. But, like, I remember losing Pascaloni. And having the whole thing just overturn. Like, if we lose all our coaches, you could kiss probably half of our recruiting class goodbye. Um, it's just, I don't know. It would be a complete rebuild. A complete rebuild. Um, if there was anybody that thought that there might have been a chance for a Ronde Gadsden to come back next year to improve his stock, that's not going to happen if that happens. Um, we lose our three three five, which we've been recruiting for. Um, we're going to have players leaving. Any player that's worth a damn that can go play at the starting at a power five and, and make more money, they're going to be gone. Um. So yeah, I don't. I think that that's that's my biggest question. Like to to your point, is you can get rid of Babers, but are you blowing it all up? Is Rocky Long gone, and we got to get a new you know defensive scheme, right? Uh, are we going to lose uh, Coach Nunzio, Coach Camp, who's from New Jersey, and we have six New Jersey guys out of – I mean, New Jersey guys are a third of our recruiting class next year. On top of the fact that two of our better ones, we have a quarterback, Chikari Williams, out of Georgia, and then Jamie Tremble, who's their four-star tight end slash receiver type player from Georgia as well. I mean, what, what happens to those players? Um, so, again, still a lot to be answered, but – um, if their plan is to hire somebody that's going to come in and just bring his guys in and get rid of the whole coaching staff and can that, then um, then we're in for we're in for some tough days, some tough tough days ahead. And the worst part about it is, is that next year, like I said, we have a manageable schedule, so it could even be a situation where we could have a worse team get bring in a, a new coach and we actually do do win like seven, eight games because of how manageable our schedule is, doesn't mean that he's a better coach. Um, that's, looking at our schedule. That's, my, that's what I'm saying. I mean, a lot of things can be masked next year. I mean, if that's the case. Mm-hmm. Because, because, of the, because of the schedule. I mean, you're expected to win a bunch of those games. And, you know, everybody, you, you could sit there and look at it and be like, oh, man, what a masterful season. But I mean, even if you're really, if you're very successful, and you're just, you know, moderately successful, we don't know what the hell the difference is. But we just know that it's a good year. If it's going to change, if you're going to change, it's a good year to do it. I don't think, as far as everything being blown up, is is not really kind of what I was thinking. I'm more thinking about our previous conversations about, you know, the school itself, and you know how things are handled in the school now, and. You know how, you know. I think Dino makes just under four million, and you know what are you going to pay a new coach? What kind of what kind of NIL money are they going to get for the football team? You know who what what kind of pay are the players going to get for the football team? I mean, these are university decisions, despite what some people on Twitter might want to think. Oh but, yeah, but and that's that's what then and I'm you know, I was going to speak to that as well because now. You know, it's kind of a shitter get out the off the pot situation. Exactly, it's like because you had you had your uh, you, you had your I don't, I don't I'm not going to say that your scapegoat and um, you said it anyway. Uh, no, 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 no. I was no, no. Nah. Oh, okay, we can. Um, but 
you, you had your scapegoat, and now he's gone. Now you got rid of him. So yeah, now, now, right now, you either have to now you either have to really start paying out for those things and come up with a, 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 a an, an actual program for these students to be paid and these coaches to be paid more, or right. you're going to or it's going to and be players. the same thing. Well, yeah, I said players. Yeah, or, or we're going to be looking at the same thing. It's going to be deja vu. See the same thing. We've seen the same thing too. That's the thing. I mean, like, I don't know. It's a lot more Is, easy to see now that NIL is actually legal. Yeah, that's the problem. Before you could always say, right? Oh, in private university. Oh, we're doing everything we can. We're doing everything we can. Like. Like I said, they're still catching up on nutritionists and, and facilities. So now it's going to put a honus on them to actually do their job um, and, and allow this next coach to be successful. And, and I'll, I'll just say this, too. You know, I don't disagree with the decision necessarily. I mean, you know, we can look at the record and we can look at some of the, you know, the, the, the penalties that have plagued us the past few years, you know, the offensive line woes, some of the coaching issues, and you can look at all that stuff, and you, we can talk about all that. And uh, But I, I will say that, for me, I'm not going to, like, I would never bag on any coach. And I just don't think it all lies with the coach. But I do think there was things that could have been done better or different. And so I'm not going to sit here and be, in a, be a Coach Baber's apologist because I get it. And I think I made myself clear about that a few weeks back. And I just think that the way it – all, it all is going to come down on, to how this is handled. Who, who gets in there and what do we actually start seeing uh, happen as far as the university putting their, putting their rubles in the, in, into football? And I think, you know, when I was talking about, you know, I'm not going to join this NIL collective thing until I figure out where I want to earmark my money. Well, I think it's clear I'm going to earmark, earmark my money to football. <laughs> For me, that's where, that's where I'm going. So mm-hmm. um, by December, you got to December 11th and you get matched dollar for dollar. So that's, the, you know, got a couple weeks left. But, I mean, obviously, I think that's where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. And, I, you know, I think the basketball program's healthy and... You, know, you get Donnie Freeman. I mean, look, this kid's lighting things up over the weekend too. So, I mean, you've got a really good, a really good core um, group with football or with basketball, and I just feel like something needs to change with football. It's been so so long. It's been way too long for for that. And you can change your you can earmark differently every year too. By the way, if you wanted to. But anyway, yeah. With with that, so and Joe kind of has the same. Joe on Facebook. I mean, our buddy Joe. Um, he said, what a joke. Fire him when the problems were evident or let him finish out the season. No wonder this program has become a laughing stock. Pretty much to what you said, right? Yeah, and <coughs> exactly. It's probably a little bit better than what I said it. But, you know, just either do – either it should have been already done or you could have waited the end of the season. And to your point that you made, which I never even thought about, like obviously you can – you can start recruiting behind the scenes and not have it affect, you know, getting a late start. You could have been, who knows, maybe they were. Maybe they were, which makes even less sense to me why he wouldn't just finish the year. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Because likely they probably were doing what you said they were doing. So there's probably, there's probably some truth to that, that, that they've already been doing it. And... We're going to let him go with one. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. They want to let him go because they don't want him. Well, I don't know if I can say that. I was going to say they want to let him go because they don't want him to become bowl eligible and go to a bowl. And they, like, in other words, it was inevitable. They don't, want, they don't want him to look successful enough to make a bowl game and then get fired. I mean, it's possible. Who knows? But, uh, the th- but see, that's why the way it happened makes, makes people think. And, you know, you come up with things like that. So it doesn't matter. Uh, I'll keep my powder dry till we see what's going on. I hope that, um, you know, we don't lose recruits. We don't lose other coaches. And we'll just have to see what happens. And I'm not going to stress about it because it's out of my control. But I'll tell you, the fan base is fractured. The, the, 
there's everything to do with the fan base and like social media. I'm sure it's totally different interaction in person, but social media is just a pile of shit. I mean, it's so stupid. It's so stupid there. If you didn't think it was stupid before, well, it's gotten really stupid. And I think um, some of it's frustration and some of it, it's like you can't have your opinion. If someone disagrees with you, then you, you know, you don't know what you're talking about, you know, because everybody on Twitter is the smartest person on the planet. And I, I, I don't know if you knew that or not, but yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I knew that. So anyways, I mean, it's a terrible place to be. But all right, let's hear what you all think about the release of Dino Babers from the Syracuse football program. All right, Joe, I've got um, I got some on Twitter specifically for that, but there was there was a post I put up earlier on the announcement. We can you can troll Facebook for that one. There's probably some in there. So, uh, all right, let's start. Oh, as soon as I get Twitter up, we'll do this for a little bit, and then Joe's going to tell us about the mighty oh, balls of us. Tennessee. I mean, I know very little. I told you everything I know about Tennessee Volunteers already. They're much older than us and more experienced. Twitter. Okay. Wow. This took off. All right. Here we go. I'll just put this up a minute ago. If you got Facebook up. All right. Here we go. At Baptized by Fire, our buddy Dom, I'll let you know how, how I feel after they hire the new guy. If they go cheap and get an unproven coordinator or someone without any um, Northeast mis- Midwest ties, it's not going to go well. Um, Dom big Agreed. on the big Dom big on the coaches stuff. Like he's he's he really gets into that stuff. That and the the recruiting stuff he loves. So. Um, yeah. You know, it's true. Yeah, they're gonna have to pay. They 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 need to get a big ass name, and they need to pay money. They're not gonna get a big name. Uh, they need to pay. <laughs> they're not gonna get a big name. He says. I mean, no, I'm just saying. It, we'll we'll get a <laughs> we'll get a an up and coming coach from the Sun Belt <laughs> that has coached in the Southeast his whole life oh, and oh, oh. claims he's gonna turn. Syracuse into the Georgia of the Northeast, right? Remember when we, we dealt with all that? Yeah, it was, um, you know, what what happens if we if we win against Wake Forest? We got the uh, the 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 Hyde's Hot Dog Bowl. I mean, what the Wasabi we, Bowl. What are we gonna do? The, the Hyde's Hot Dog Bowl, bowl and, and we're gonna play it at Fenway, Liverpool. Fenway Park. Fen- Fenway Park. Uh, okay, at Zach. Seven one three zero one eight one six. Come on, Zach, change that up. I really want to see him be successful. At the end of the day, his his in game decision making, lack of discipline, and lack of recruiting, utilizing QB and offensive line were assigned to move on. Our program needs the stability. Um, then we can start worrying about rankings. Kind of like a, I mean, you know, you have to imagine how does this start again, over. You know what I mean? Like, where are we going to? Regardless of who comes in or anything in, to that degree, you have to wonder how does this all get jump started again um, to the point where you know now we got to now we got to start this whole recruiting thing over again. Now we've got to start to um, really utilize the NIL money and see if they're actually going to do things like that. But <laughs> I yeah. don't know. You, you got to start next week too, like figuring out, you know, what are you going to do against Wake well, how Forest? How do you start? Huh? How do you start next week? No, I'm saying just the team in general. Like, you know, you have to keep the team together. The team's got to, they've still got another game and a possible bowl game, right? So mm-hmm. that's the worst part about it, right? It's like he's the player's coach. So a lot of those guys will damn run through a damn wall for that guy. And like, right. And now we've got to, now, now, you know, you heard LaQuinn Allen in the montage talk about you know we want to do this for these coaches and the staff those those guys have been playing for coach you know I, the, a lot of that pit game you know was was circled around that idea and now you know they're going to be playing for a familiar coach and everything but we're also 
a situation where you know, you have to not you know you have to keep the don't lose the the team and and I don't think I think with the way these kids play I don't think they will cuz they can still play I hope for not. No, I don't think they will. But they but can there's, I mean you could still play for coach even though he's not there anymore. But you know why? That's my thing. Right. It's like why it's just like that whole thing going on with James Madison or all these like and you know everyone questions oh what the NCAA is doing in the rulings cuz they swear they're for their kids and to protect the kids and it's like it's for the kids, right? Like I mean, I get it, but why would you do – You know, we need one game before bowl eligibility. I don't care what bowl it is, and I don't care if anyone is mad or upset. Oh, we went 6-6 six and six and we went to the Tony the Tiger Bowl. It's still money, and it's experience for the kids. And now, one week away from their last chance to do that, their last chance to get a trip, to get some swag at a, and show out and show their talent in a bowl game in another city, extra practices, and – now you're going to throw this wrench in there? Oh, by well, the way, this isn't the coach anymore. So now what do you got? You got people. Of course, there's people like Schrader and people like, I don't know, Marlo Wax is probably going to go pro. There's probably players like that that, you know, they already knew what they were going to do, right? But there's also other players that now in the back of their head, they're like, who's going to be the coach? What am I doing? Am I going to have to transfer? Like, and sometimes people, they can not, you know, they can leave it off to the side. But, you know, I think that that, that does affect some people. You know, even down to the coaches. I mean, yeah, this is a, tr- a tryout, right? Or this is a well, tryout well, for the coaches that are there to come in and step in and take over and, and just, you know, show that they could be a little bit better, maybe get a chance. But, like, I mean, even those coaches, are they thinking about where they're going to be next year? Oh, they probably are. There's probably so many things on their mi- in the back of everybody's mind. they got to try to stay focused. And it's almost like you would say – I don't know. Would you use the word sabotage? I mean, I don't, that's that's kind, of, that's kind of what I was feeling like earlier. Like it's 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 just like if you could have done this three weeks ago, or if you were planning on doing it anyway, because regardless, you know, then why not? Or like you said, just all right. Well, we're gonna let the year finish out, but um, we're gonna talk behind the scenes. You know, it, is it is it something to do with the fact that well, we want them gone regardless, and if even if they get a bowl. You know, we don't want them to get a bowl and then go to a bowl and possibly win a bowl game and then fire them. That's going to look really bad. So let's just, you know what? Let's just do it now. Like a frantic yeah. moment where you're just like, just do it now. It's like, okay, well, now these kids are trying to play for a bowl game. The 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 team has been modified from its original version already. Mm-hmm. What does it look like going into Wake Forest? Like, do we do that again? Like, I have, I just, there's so many question marks, and there's so much to put on uh, Campanelli too to to actually have to do to deal with all this. And now he's kind of under a microscope, right? I, I mean, or maybe he's not. But regardless, you have so many, you have so many people that are trying to go ahead and finish this season out semi successfully, and now, like you said. You, they just throw a wrench in it, and it's like. And when we said, you know, when I've said before, Syracuse, foo- uh, Syracuse University hates football. It's kind of exactly like proving my point. If you want to be successful, I don't think you do it to today. I just don't think you do it today. I mean, I think you right. let me personally. I feel like you let the year finish out, but maybe you do it three weeks ago. But you don't right. do. But you don't do it today. And like I said before, you don't think that these coaches talk to each other. You don't think that there's people that know people that know people. Dino is going to be in the ears of these coaches. This right here is just – it's a – it's it's literally an action that shows – I mean, any type of – why would a head coach even want to come here with that I, leadership? I know. With that leadership why? but be getting treated like that too? Like you just – see just, the way that – yeah. And you could say what you want about Dino Babers. I don't think – you could put any name of any coach in there. I just don't think it's the way – I don't think it's very professional, and obviously. That's my whole point, right, is you can have the opinion of, okay, he deserves it. We need a new change, but you don't do it like this. Because to me, like you said, they could have went, they could have won, they could have got bowl eligible, then they could have won a bowl, and now you're talking about players still want to play for coach. Are we going to be able to get rid of him? To yeah, me, well, now this is awkward this, if we let him go. Yeah, exactly. Right. To yeah. me, this is this is a move that leadership does when they're panicking, when, when they're panicking and, and they, they don't want to be exposed as the problem. Right. Let's get rid of this guy. 
yeah, they, panic button. We can start over. They they probably are thinking shoulda woulda coulda done it earlier, but oh well, let's do it now. And by the way, it was leaked by someone likely in a suit. <laughs> and you know, here we are. And we did we just did the same thing to Dino Babers as we did to Jim Beheim. That's not. I'm sorry. That's poor leadership. It shows chaos, and it shows an inability. Lack of communication. Yeah, an inability to run anything because it's honestly it's a lack sloppy. of integrity well. oh integrity too i mean yeah you want to go the integrity route don't get me started with syracuse and integrity i mean please i think we've been through this okay. we had this conversation before football season started so mm-hmm. we all know who su is and i'm not a fan of su i'm a syracuse football and basketball fan okay the 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 university can yeah. go yes could, could go fly a kite with a hole in it i can't stand the university <laughs> so that's that yeah, um, well i mean like i said now it's on them now it's on them because if they get someone that comes in and they do worse than dino it's like you dino, said though it's going to be hard to tell next year if they do worse than dino and besides there's every excuse in the book to use next year it doesn't. Next year doesn't matter. That's my no. Point. It's like you got to wait. He's gonna get two, three years anyway. Right. Right. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So you're gonna get three years next year. 2025 might... is the test. Yep. That's gonna be the test. That's gonna show yep. you exactly what we're gonna we be dealing with. Two, we, might not, we might not win two games that year. <laughs> and if I'm we go serious. and if we go six and six, well then you know what? Maybe we got something. I just don't know if it can be turned around that quick. And I think that everybody, can't. not everybody, but there's a lot of people who think that just firing the head coach and getting a new head coach is going to be the, the end all be all and that everything's going to be fine. But you know, we dealt with the, with the basketball coach for 40, 45 years. So, you know, it's, you know, the, the coaching carousel with the football team has been what it has been. And we can all go back and relive nightmares of Greg Robinson and all that stuff. But, you know, it doesn't, you know, it's been a struggle for over 20 years now, a real struggle. So mm-hmm. is that the coaches all the time? Every time? Everyone. Uh, every single one of them? It's, oh, no. It, no, yeah, I'm, Marone, I'm, I'm just, Marone got a head coach and he got an NFL head coaching job for going 500. Like that should tell everybody everything that they need to know. Right. And, and that's, that's my point. And that's a good way to put it is because like we're sitting here to use the word you used earlier, using these scapegoats when, you know, it's clearly a bigger problem, a bigger issue that's been going on 20 years. And you've had some pretty yep. decent coaches. Doug Marone coached the Buffalo Bills for how many years? It was a good chunk, wasn't it? Well, he went, he went on as a Jacksonville coach, too. Yeah, but but how? So but he when he left coach. SU, he went to he went to the Bills, right? Buffalo, yeah, yeah, and he he coached there for probably, probably what three five years, something like that, yeah. And then I'm he went to really Jacksonville. Sure. He was at Jacksonville for a while too. Yeah. So yeah. Schaefer only got to, three years. He was his defensive coordinator. To tell me that it's just the coach and that the coach fired. Is, go ahead. I'm saying if they fired Schaefer, Schaefer after year three and year three, you know, he won a bowl or he made a bowl game and they still fired him. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right. Let's keep going. Well, let's see. Let's kind of go uh, with go what ahead. we were talking about go too. Ahead. Andy, boy, Andy, Facebook he says, great guy, but his teams were inconsistent and undisciplined on a weekly basis. I don't see us rebuilding or going backwards any worse than what next year would be with Dino. Anyone upset about this is stuck in the past of what Syracuse has done with coaching decisions and is scared of going forward. You can't expect to go 41 and 55 in eight years and keep your job. Have faith, Orange Nation. I, I, I mean, I agree. He has smart comments. He does have smart comments. I mean, I do think that a lot of – I don't know. And just like I said, playing sports, um, a lot of that stuff is, is con- it's concentration and stuff like that. Um, you know, when it comes to penalties and things like that, I know they want to say coaching and all that other kind of stuff. But like, like I remember playing and I just knew that there were some guys that were, OK, this guy, he's probably going to have 75 percent of our fall starts this year because – Every time we go on two and we're moving fast, he can't think, and he's not great under pressure, right? Like some things like that. Like it's, I think that coaching. I mean, that's it's on the individual, right? I mean, what is coaching? How is how is a coach on the sideline 
who says, okay, this play on three, and this guy goes and he, and he fall starts. What does that have anything to do with the coach, I feel? Um, there's certain things. But, again, the coach, you know, they're the ones that they, they look at and say, okay, well, it's on them. Oh, yeah, well, your starting quarterback got hurt. Well, it's on him to have a number two, right? <clears throat> but, again, you can't just stop there. Um, and then to his comment, too, you know, anyone upset about this is stuck in the past of what Syracuse has done with coaching decisions and is scared of going backwards. Um, and to me, I that that comment hits me personally with the Pascaloni going to Greg Robinson. The fact that Pascaloni was bringing us to basically a bowl game almost every year. Um, and we blew it up. And we had a new AD come in. We had all this um, new coach come in. Well, we're going to be the USC in the Northeast. And mind you, this is the Big East. You know, we're, we're not – I mean, Akron came into the Dome and beat us, right? And the Big East is way less talented than the ACC. So um, joined the ACC in 2013, and it, it hasn't been easy. It's been tough, uh, especially – with getting connected to this Notre Dame, I mean, and I think we were a little bit, but now Notre Dame has to play certain ACC games, so we play them more now, and it's just been tough. And I am scared of going backwards because I've lived it. I lived the fact of they blew it up. And well, many of to us this, did. To this day, we are still feeling the to get pain back from to that. Just going, just going to a bowl every year. To this day, one one out of every four years we go to a bowl game. Last twenty years. By the way, where was Pascaloni too when he left? Syracuse, wasn't he? You, Where did he go? Miami. He's been an NFL coach. He's been an NFL coach. Yeah, he went to he Miami. Been. He was a, he was in Miami, was he not? Isn't that where he went directly immediately after Syracuse? I'm not sure. Immediately after, but he's I'm just been saying. A, I'm just he's saying. He's been a position he, he, coach in the NFL for ever since he pretty much you know. But he's left Syracuse. Ex- exactly. Well, I mean, to our point that we're making with Doug Marone, I mean, you might as well throw his name in there too because you know, obviously, who Pascaloni. No, oh, he's way too old. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about bringing him in as a coach. I'm talking about no. people who were let go from here and went on to have be successful at a higher level. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, you know, yeah, no, I'm not talking about what do you want to bring Coach Mack back? I mean, no, that's not what I'm saying. Um, it'd be a little ho- tough to do. <laughs> Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> too soon. Any any time would be too soon. Uh, yeah. At Cuse Waterboy two, I think uh, uh, I think a change need to be made if the university has a plan in place, and that's a big if. I'm shocked uh, shocked they actually pulled the trigger this morning. Definitely need to get uh, get a plan in place though before the portal opens, and to save future recruits and current players. I think you know. Yeah. Why this morning? I don't, I don't freaking know. Why not last night? Why not at halftime? <laughs> last night. I mean, it's the difference. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, now it's the game, you, right? Because now there's so many other things that I'm worried about than getting to a bowl game. There's who are they, like, who are they going to keep? I guarantee you, I mean, you lose a couple of these guys, you know, you change the defense you're losing guys. You're going to lose guys anyway. But you bring in a coordinator that's got a different defense than 3 3 you're losing some guys. If you lose some of these, I think a lot of these coaches. R- that Rocky Long has in to really stay, dude. Recruiting. Rock, Rocky Long has to stay. I, I, I just don't. Unless he decides to leave, I don't think Syracuse is that dumb. To no. Me. And like I said, Nunzio, he's I mean, got. I mean, he brought in like whoever's the recruiter in that area of Jersey, which I think it's him and everything. We've got guys like we got, we got transfers. You know that were teammates in high school in Jersey that came over last year with, with Gould and Bellamy who have been starting to to play well and, and climbing up the depth chart. Um, and like I said, a third of our of our commits for next year are from that state. So to me, there's people that you got to keep. And Jason Beck, he was an up and coming offensive coordinator. Um, he was going to be an offensive coordinator at a Power Five school at some point very very soon. And again, this is the first year of them just trying to figure it out. So. Uh, a lot of that does have to do with that. You know, like you said, people want to, you know, well, like Nadal says in Facebook, you know, it takes more than one man to run a program. And if you're losing four to f- three to five, you know, recruiting or recruiters and coaches every year, and then we're losing some of our more talented players to other schools because of NIL, then that's not the same team. Like now you got to bring other people and get them on board, get them, 
get on the same page. Like that is difficult to do. And then you start losing commits and stuff because a lot of times, I mean, yes, the commits do commit to the coach, the program, the head coach, but a lot of times it's their relationship with the actual recruiter, the position coaches. Um, so now, I mean, that, that's the stuff that I'm thinking about. I'm not even thinking about Wake Forest and going to a bowl game. Oh, yeah, I know. It just it just derails the train. I mean, they derailed the train. And like we've been talking about and, and at MF Brightside, just, um, you know, he's in the same boat with us. Why not the egg after the Virginia Tech game? Why not after BC? I don't understand the timing. Let them let the team compete for a bowl and make a decision next week. Let him coach the rest of the year. Seems reactionary and suspect that you keep him there to win that you keep him there to win the pit whatever that means i don't know but did you the, keep him the there first, to win the pit game oh to you lose five to win pit. In a row. yeah that's probably what it is yeah you keep him where they're there to win to beat pit and then yeah, that and that's just what i'm saying it's like the decision was made the decision's been made and and Maybe it got leaked early and it wasn't supposed to, and they're like, "Oh shit!" But again, that comes down to leadership and communication, and um, but that's the thing, integrity. That's the and that's my whole thing is again, like I said, two things can be true at once. But at the end of the day, at least Dino had his his kind of you know his the pulse of the team, you know, players, coach, the culture of the football program, all that stuff. Well, and, look what they did was, last week. Was, that team was so together last week. You know what I mean? Oh like yeah. The the just the um, the morale of the team after going through what they went through was absolutely as high as it could be in that situation. No. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Georgia Tech so like, going and playing in that environment at Georgia Tech, who's a team that needed that win to go bowling because and, they're playing Georgia next week. Yeah. And, and to and have to the come comeback. Back yeah. With an offense like that and the guys that are injured. Um. Yeah, I just. But the fact of the matter is we've seen a botched <laughs> retirement with Jim Beheim. We've seen a botched, you know, firing with Dino Babers and all that fun stuff. Um, we can't even get that those plans right. So, I mean, I guess that's really my biggest thing when it comes to the AD and, and, while, um, and Severud and stuff like that is that it's – it's they can't even get the easy, simple stuff right. They don't even have a plan to make that work or a plan to, so that they can communicate it, do it correctly so it doesn't get leaked. Um, so what makes you think that they actually have a plan that's going to work outside of this? Yeah. I, I, Unless they completely change everything that they're doing and everything that we've been talking about on this podcast, they turn around and they actually start putting all that effort and support and resources into the damn cash cows that actually make money for your for your university. Isn't it funny though, Joe, how we, we've actually, which we've been having this conversation for weeks now and it's, it's relatively the same conversation, but at a different level. And like, you know, I don't know how we do it. <laughs> what the frick? You know what I'm saying? Like, my gosh, what a, what a train wreck. You know, yeah. it's, it's so dysfunctional. The whole thing, everything to do with the past couple years in regards to the higher ups at Syracuse is so dysfunctional and so uh, just. I can do not, it because I want to talk out. about it because I want to let it be known so people, it's, everybody knows. I know. You can't just, it's just, can't just blame the coaches. There's way there's a bigger hierarchy than that. It's just so poorly thought out at every turn. It just makes no sense to me. It's, it's like, are they that dumb? They can't be. I mean, these are these are people in powerful positions making million do- millions of dollars a year. They yeah, can't be this stupid, sh- can they? Are, are irresponsible? Can they really? I mean, sure they you, can. They Look fail. at our government. It's like failing upward. It's the same thing. It is the if same have, thing. We've compared it to the government in politics, too. Yeah. And you're not using it. Uh, if you have pro- cor- corruption and politics involved with a lot of money. Then something, the stuff's not going to work. The only thing that's good is their bank accounts. The only reason, I mean, I talked to my buddy about it, and it's just like almost if you were to put it into stocks, right? Like the amount of money that we put into some of these other schools. I think it is sometimes, I mean, yes, you want to be inclusive and, you know, you know, the DEI stuff that everyone's pushing and everything. Yes, 100%. But if you have, let's if if every, if every single sport, and this is how my buddy Sabo explained it to me, or he, this was his analogy. If every sport at Syracuse was a stock, 
And the only two stocks that made money were, were basketball, basketball and football. football. Then why wouldn't a majority of your money be going into that? Because, because there's those... more to it because of what you just said. That's my point, though. Because but the, everybody's got to get some of the money. Is it's addition by multi, it's addition by subtra- subtraction. Okay. It's if you the, the amount of money that they'd actually be able to give these other sports would be more if they actually put more money into their football and their basketball program so that they could make more money. You put more money into it, you make more money. Then you have more money to give these other programs. But instead, we but instead, spread it out. You spread it out you evenly and you stay mediocre. Resources. Yeah. And now what's happening is the money that we're making back from basketball and football is going down. I mean, look, they'd rather fire a coach early instead of saying, okay, we're going to end our relationship at the end of the year, but we want to try to, you know, for the kids, for the senior day that's coming next week and a chance to go to a bowl game and make some money, we're going to just sabotage it. We're going to leak it, leak it to an alumni that works for ESPN. Like it doesn't talk make about, any. It does talk it about corruption. Sense. By the way, it's the same shit they do in D.C. with these reporters, and who the hell knows? It's like the House of Cards. Oh, who wants to be? Who's who's going to be first? Who's going to be the first one to do it? Right? Who's going? Yeah, exactly. Oh, let's give it to the the new House alum. It's my um, buddy. I rub elbows with at ESPN. Yeah. Um. All right, Dom. Speak or forever hold yourself if you're still there. Hello. I don't know if he's there, man. Oh, there we go. What'd you say? Start over. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you're good. That is what I'm upset about right now. The fact that Pete Thamel knew before Caleb Okachuku knew is the problem with this university. Every coach that is left, I'm not a lacrosse guy, so I don't know who last Shame goes in the, in, the, in the hierarchy of, of lacrosse coaches. But I know they messed that firing up. I know that they messed up the retirement of Jim Beheim. I know that they messed up the firing of the women's basketball coach because they knew that he was a, he was a turd long before that athletic um, article came out. They have messed up the release of these coaches. And like, how do you mess up Jim Beheim retiring? <laughs> I know you had, you had 45 years to figure that one out. Right. <laughs> like, I mean, they, you couldn't even, like, salute the guy. Dude, my grandmother said this. Flat out to me when when people wanted Jim fired after Moten made that that the bad timeout. Do you guys remember that? You're about the same age as me. In 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 the tournament, I think it was against Arkansas, and they went on to win the whole thing. They want him fired, and my grandmother is like, "Do do they realize that Syracuse sports would be like Colgate if it wasn't for Jim Beheim?" She even <laughs> included football into that. She said the football carried his on his coattails. Yeah, they did. Even, During with us, with us growing up, that was that right. was somewhat the case until you got until you got the McNabs and the Harrisons in there. Absolutely, but it is they, this guy. He first off, he ran. Look at ESPN, and then he leaves. So he thinks that he can run. It, I'm so upset with Wild Hack. There's no way that those players. And I heard Matt Park say it. He goes, "I can tell you firsthand. If you think that B- Babers has lost the locker room." He hasn't. He may have lost the fan base, which could cost him his job, but he has not lost that locker room. You're going to have kids leave who, who aren't. Uh, now, there's a lot of transfers on this team, like Bellamy and uh, what is his name? Gold, uh, Gould. J- Gold, and, yeah. Uh, Ocho can't leave. He may, he, may be old, he may be eligible for the draft. Who knows? But the guys who are not transfers, like LaQuinn Allen, I can – Dude, do you know how upset I would be if I was LaQuinn Allen? You don't tell me before before Pete Thamel knows. Yeah, you don't have a meeting with the team or you don't let them finish. Right. The, the, the big thing is to let them finish the year, right? I mean, isn't that right. what it comes down to? And you, did you see did you see Okachuku's comment to Emily Likert? I didn't. I didn't. Well, he's like, well, I guess it's a business. We're just going to have to go out and play for ourselves now. I'm paraphrasing, of course. You know what I mean? But th- this is... And I'm not saying that he shouldn't have been fired. I mean, he has won. He has not won enough games in November. I get it. What was he right? four and seventeen in November? What was right, it? Right, right. And like the more you look back on it, retrospect, like I like Dino the man, whereas I never liked Robinson as the man. And maybe it's like the Twitter age, and I feel like I got to know him better. You know what I mean? Or maybe because I talked to him on the coaches' show, you know, two or three times in the past, you know, three or four years when I called in or whatever. But there, there was something about him 
that I liked, then if I'm not going to get to a bowl, well, I would rather it be Dino Babers not going to a bowl than um, some schmuck, you know, like, like I couldn't stand Schaefer. He's just sounded like a tool all the time on, on radio shows and stuff and everything that I, that I would hear him talk. You know what I mean? And that, that's what I'm upset about. And then just like the, you hear about the culture and you see like, um, um, Garrett Williams' dad tweet out talking about how great of a guy Dino was to his kid. Like that's if we're not going to get to bowl games, that's what I want. So wherever they get <laughs> get in, he better get to a bowl game every year. Or this was for nothing. This was this was this was just uh, um, like I, I mean I'm a government worker. You're just you're just doing something just to dot an eye because some some guy came with his Dino's buyout money and a check and handed his wild act and said I want the guy gone. That's probably what happened on that plane. Somebody on the plane didn't he, like what Dino had to say to him, and he's a donor, and he went and walked over to Wild Hack, handed him the buyout money, and said, here, I want him gone. That's probably what happened. Who knows? It's so corrupt. I mean, but that's what that's how it happens. <laughs> they, look, look at Jimbo. Everybody, you don't know the specifics, but it's come out the Thursday before Jimbo Fisher was fired. They didn't even play the game yet against Mississippi State. They beat. They scored fifty-one against Mississippi State, and it's come out that they had the forty-nine million dollar raise on Thursday, before the game on Saturday for him to be fired. That's how it works. It's just donors. Somebody's somebody in Wild Hack's pocket handed him a check and said, "I want him gone." That's what it was. <laughs> yeah, yep. seven. Bro, my money's gone, right? Seven and twenty-two in November, by the way. And like I said, it's not. I'm not saying that he doesn't need. Like it may not. It may be time for a change. Right, maybe, but but, but th- isn't there a way to do it? Isn't there a modicum of no. respect? No, we're not an SEC school that has, has any chance of winning a, a, a SEC championship, dude. Like, I, I use ECU to me. ECU and Syracuse are very parallel, even though they're not one's eh. at Conference USA or one's at ACC school. I'm, I'm they, they have about the same size. Uh, um, um, they don't have the same size body, but let's say like. Uh, I was thinking you fit fifty two thousand in, in Dowdy Ficklin here, right? But ECU fans think they're much higher on the depth chart of life than than they ever should. Just like Syracuse fans, I think to a certain point. In the, in two thousand fifteen, Ruffin McNeil was go- after Skip Holtz left for God knows wherever he went and then got fired because he didn't do well when he got his when he got his promotion, right? So in twenty fifteen, the new AD comes in from Northern Illinois. Fires Ref and McNeil for going six and six, and says we expect um, eight uh, Conference USA or AAC championships, whatever they were in then, and fired him. They've been to one bowl game since. Everybody loved Ruff and McNeil. He was a former alumni here, and I'm not a big ECU fan, but I like the guy too. I'm I, we were so bad over, under Schaefer and that I was almost rooting for ECU more than I was Syracuse. Like McNeil had me. That invested in in my local team here when just moving here just four years five years prior. It's going to be this. I'm worried it's going to be the same. And that doesn't mean that you don't fire the coach because the fans are worried it's going to be the same thing. But like the process was backwards. Tell the students first, man. That that if I if Okachuku came in and said yeah, Wild Hack talked to us at a team meeting once we got off the plane, explained to us what was going to happen tomorrow, and this is you know we all got to say goodbye to coach. And and that you know, they, there's no way they're letting him in the building today. They're pay- paying a mover to get Dino's stuff out and ship it into his house. I mean, that's how corporate America does stuff when you get let go like this. Yeah. Well, See, those kids aren't even going to get to say goodbye to him. It, that's wrong. It's wrong. It just is. And I, I'm just hot about it. You know what I mean? Just do stuff the right way. And if it was the first mistake they made, guys, like if it was, if they did. Bayheim right, if they did Lasco right, if they did, if they fired Coach Q as soon as they realized that he was crappy to those girls, they, I would kind of give Wild Hack a pass. I own, now, I understand that one a little bit. There, there's actual they're, allegations they're, against the coach in that situation. Right. right, they're they're four for four for being stupid and letting people go on this one. They really are. So thanks, guys. I'll let, I'll let I won't I won't take up anybody any more time, you guys. I'll talk to you soon. All right, Dom. Appreciate you, buddy. Appreciate it, Dom. Um, I'm right there with him. Yeah, no, I just let him vent. Uh, Tony, speak now or forever. Hold yourself. I know you'd like to do either or, but you're on. Hey boys, how we going? <laughs> how you doing? All right, uh, could be better. All right, bit of morning. Didn't didn't see that coming. Like holy crap! No, it's gonna be uh, 
It's like a Monday, and I called yeah. out from work. This is all funny, too. And, like, I want to kind of go off Joe's point a little bit. I think, like, we've been brainwashed for so long. We put way too much faith in the people that are in charge in all industries of life. Government, oh, corporations, yeah. universities. It's hard to get These through on that, though. These are smart people. No, These are not. people who play the game, shake hands with the right people, kiss the right ass, and get in charge. They truly have no idea what they're doing. Dude, look at Arizona. They just said they had an accounting area, era. I can't speak. An accounting error. error and misplaced $240 million. Well, that right. sounds like Dude. the government. Dude, if I misplaced 20 bucks, I'm ripping my house apart to find it in the wash. Yeah. Like, are you you kidding me? Yeah. Like, it it was... God. My problem with Syracuse is you got to cut the head off the snake. There should be way more talk about firing Savarud before anybody else. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I would love to, yeah, see that happen. I mean, I think... It, 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 it's there's a board too. Let's not forget. Yeah, there's a board. I yeah, I, I don't think they make football a priority at all. N- no, like, they don't. You, you're happy to cash the ACC checks. You're happy to move conferences, which I agreed with the move. It had to be done, but you did nothing to invest in the program. No new facilities. We got a late start at NIL. We just don't make it a priority. Like I, my eyes were open going to Blacksburg. Our game day experience sucks for the fans. It is. It's terrible. terrible. There's no tradition there, dude. It's so bad. One of my buddies, you know, I talk about on Twitter all the time, the boys, like the group of like four or five guys we got. One of them right now is in Houston. He went to a Houston football game yesterday, and he's like, dude, like the pregame blows us out of the water. They got fire and shit. This is awesome. Well, like, that's, that's why I – it's not the main reason why, but once I went to an away game and it was just like my experience was just like I felt like I was like under a rock for my whole entire life. <laughs> and I had just come out from yeah. under the rock and I'm like, wow, so this is what it's like. And then, exactly. I, and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to make this my priority every year to go to an away game to watch my team play and at least get to feel that true NCAA college football atmosphere that I never grew up with. It was never there. It was yeah, never there like that. It's ever. Wizard, of, uh, Wizard of Oz going from black and white to color. Like, yeah, I went to like an seriously. Atlanta Braves game, and Atlanta has like two-hour traffic after a game. And I'm like, how can you ever complain about traffic in Syracuse? It takes me 20 minutes from Camillus to the Dome, 20 minutes back, even on the busiest of game days. Like, this, it's a joke. Yeah, it's – well, yeah, that's a whole I mean, other level. Georgia but Tech too, man. I mean, just watching that on TV. Yeah, they got their drive, – Driving yeah. the car out there, yeah. you could just see – I mean, you could tell the production was way better, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. And then, you know, even like Florida State, right? Oh, Florida, Florida State, State is got, off the chart. Right. And it, it may be a little thing, but all these little things start to add up. Like you can't have – How about – Bad product on the field, bad game day experience, all these things. Like I go to the AAA baseball games here, and I barely watch the baseball, and I'm a baseball junkie. I'm just shooting the shit with the buddies, but I have a blast there. How about – The game day experience is great. They're keeping people engaged. People are having a good time. Through, like Throughout the whole game, every time you, you were at the – you were in Blacksburg. So there's the key, the key rattle on – third down then every time they get a t- first down it's first the hokies down, chant. Hokies. it's the h-o-k-i-e-s hokies 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 chant and, and yeah. you just you they are engaged now there's an mc that's that's helping along with that that keeps them and it's and it's in your face and it's and it's constant and everybody knows what to do to play along it keeps you engaged in these games especially when the games are tight and we just don't we just don't have it we don't there's Dude. there's nothing to there's nothing to glom on to to keep you like invested in that type of atmosphere. I mean, I think it was a huge mistake to put all this money into this dome and not have a retractable roof. <coughs> I I just feel like you can you could have had the best of both worlds if you open that son of a bitch up and let everybody freaking get snowed on. Okay, I, I, I just feel like they missed a huge opportunity yeah. there spending that kind of money. And you know what? We've been saying for years, get some freaking tradition going. You know, I don't know yeah. who's in the booth in MC in the games, but it's awfully vanilla. And I feel like it could be a whole lot better. And well, part of that will I'm keep lo- the fans happy, too, Tony. I mean, it's not just the fact yeah. that, you know what I mean? It's not exciting. It's not as exciting. 
Yeah, I'll give you a little insight on that. Like back in 2019, when they had those in-game host editions, and to be real, that thing was kind of rigged in a way. The three people who won it were all new house students. But credit to the guy that ran the show. He gave me a chance, and he's like, hey, like, you know, we're not going to let you be the host, but, like, I want to incorporate you somehow. And I got to do the stuff on the sidelines. This guy had amazing ideas. And he's like, hey, uh, do you – can you drive a motorcycle? And I'm like, well, no, but I'll go get my license if you want me to. Why? And he's like, he's like, down the road, I have this awesome idea. Like, what if we have you driving a motorcycle, and we put auto in the sidecar, and, like, you guys lead the team out when they come out of the tunnel? And I'm like – Brilliant. Let's do it. Fast forward to like COVID and now he runs the show over at Cincinnati. He, you know, he saw the writing on the wall and got the hell out of there. But I'm like, throw stuff at the wall, do cool stuff like that. Like our entrance is so bland. Just try new things, man. Yeah. They come out with, uh, you know, they got some smoke blowing and we run out and, you know, it, it's average. It's like average. we can do so much better, but it all starts at the top. Like there needs to be, we need to figure out our identity and just start fresh. Like I have a daughter. I love, I love kids, but the whole let's go orange chant with a little kid where it's off beat and it's, it's quiet. It's not working, man. Like the, the stand and clap at basketball games. It's you know, I've long, talked about this on Twitter. Yeah. Why do we put all the pressure on our own team? We should stand and clap for the other team until they make a basket. And then each time they miss, intensify the clapping. You get to that first four-minute timeout, they haven't made a basket. Otto's army is going absolutely insane, screaming at him, chanting at him, going nuts. The energy is intensifying. Like, this is not hard to figure out, guys. This is not rocket science. It's not. Joe and I have mentioned the standing clapping thing and how ridiculous it is and how, how it is just so um, distracting to your own team. I mean, common sense tells you... Like you said, you don't do that to your team. It's yeah, it's a distraction. I, I was at the Pittsburgh game. <laughs> Got to like, be a better way. T- the Pittsburgh game, like twelve or fifteen years ago, where we didn't score a bucket for, for like the first twelve minutes. You could see that they were pressing and just jacking up bad shots. All the pressure was on our own team. Makes zero sense. Yeah, this well, is all just a microcosm of, of the bigger picture. Like just. It needs to start from the top, man. Just fix everything. Yeah, it's there's a lot of problems. You know? Come in with a game plan. Don't make change for the sake of change if you don't have a plan in place. We did that when we went from Pascaloni to Robinson, and he put us in a damn crater we're still trying to dig out of. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, all right. Yeah, right there. We're there with you. We feel the pain. Frustrating. I feel yeah. Luke McPhail's pain, too. That was painful. Oh God, that poor kid! It's brutal. Let's just put you in for the, the, the games on the line. Here's your first snap. Good luck. I kid. said, I said to myself, "This is, is am I awake? Is, am I awake? Still watching this live? Is this what's happening?" Yep. And I'm so glad I was at a friend's giving party watching that and just eating my feelings. Oh I was my like, this gosh! Is I was like, at the end of the night, I was having trouble anyway, and here I am watching this, and sure as shit. He throws an interception, and I'm just like, this poor guy. Like, you just put him in the worst possible situation you could possibly put him in. I, I went to the host. I was like, hey, man, where are those Harrison uh, Bakery brownies I brought? I'm going to eat the rest of the box now. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Tony. We appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, don't, boys. Hey, buddy. Don't be a stranger. Talk to you later. Absolutely. Have a good all one, right. boys. You too. Bye. See you, bud. Man, a lot of good points, man. You can you you can go off on any many different angles when it comes to the things that will make these programs better. From the point that your boy Sabo made to, you know, the tradition that we're <coughs> that I think we're lacking. You know, there's a lot there's a lot there to um, to take into consideration when you talk about really, 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 truly turning a program around and making it something special. Yeah. And we're yep. just at, we're just we're average because everything about it's average. There's there's no there's no there's not much about it that is just stands out to you like something that could be super exciting. You know, I just I just wish that it seems to me. So honest and truly, I'm not saying this for effect. It seems to me like they don't give a shit. And I wish they, I wish they really did, because I feel like if you, if you really cared, th- th- things wouldn't be the way they are. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? So I, I don't yeah. really have a whole lot left to say about it. I think well. it's a mess. I think it's disorganized. <laughs> I think it's clunky. I think it's laughable. I think that it, it is clear that they don't know what they're doing. And they, they don't have a plan in that we're just going to hire the next shiny object and expect to change. And, you know, we're going to be living this cycle until something bigger has a bigger shoe has dropped. And you've got yeah. people in charge of people in charge of people and a board. <laughs> that's a lot there to have to. That's a lot of layers to get through. Yeah. And they and like you said, you know, the, the comparison to Congress or just just the government in general, like that's a lot of layers, man. You know, term limits. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's almost the same thing. Once you become, once you have all these separate groups where you, you are all on the same page because you're all making some good money and everybody's getting what they want and you're rubbing each other's back constantly, it doesn't matter what happens in that group because they're untouchable. Yeah. Everybody else below them, though, is going to be the one that's blamed and they're the one that's going to feel all the pain for it. I think it's university sucks. I think Syracuse University sucks. I think I think they're I think they're you want to talk well, about integrity. I think I think that they could use some integrity. They use yeah, they could use Jesus, really. Yeah. Is what they yeah. could use. Well, to, and to be perfectly honest with you too, um you know, I was a little quiet there cuz I was going down the rabbit hole of looking I just wanted to look and say, look. Let me look at this dude and see what he's done. Let's see what he's done. John Wildhack, obviously he went to Syracuse, graduated yeah. from Syracuse. But he worked at ESPN for 36 years, and when he came across and he came over, he was the executive vice president for programming and production for ESPN. You'd think he he'd was, be able to produce something exciting. You'd think be able to pr produce at least a game day atmosphere, right? <laughs> yeah, it's lazy. That's lazy. And at the end of the day, I mean, I'd love to be a fly on the wall that says... Why did Mark Coyle? Why did Mark Coyle only stay here for eleven months and then leave? And then somebody who has no prior experience in athletic administration whatsoever, but because he worked at ESPN and he had connections with Syracuse, he became the preferred candidate. Like I'm sorry, I'm looking at this and I see somebody that literally didn't have the resume to get this job. And got it because they know it's and, uh, who and you what are. What he was too, actually you know. good at, at programming and production, you'd at least assume we'd have some type of entertainment factor. So that makes zero sense to me whatsoever. Um, so if you want to go there, then we can go there. And then obviously if you want to go even a, a, a step further, and this is another thing that's really um, – like I said, you can you can let your minds run because, you know, like I said, we've kind of blended politics and leadership and all that stuff. But Kent Severud, he was the dean of like law – he was a law school guy. Went to law school, professor of law. Um Taught complex litigation, insurance law, and civil procedures at Vanderbilt and at University of Michigan Law School. I mean, this guy's been around law. So how do you let something like LaQuint happen? How do you let something like that lacrosse player happen, right? How come there's things like that? And then when you dig down a little bit deeper, previously served as one of two independent trustees of the Deepwater Horizon Oil Spill Trust, a $20 billion fund to pay claims arising from the 2010 BP oil spill in Gulf of Mexico. Um, and it also says he played a critical role in luring the Micron Technologies $100 billion chip factory project to the area. Oh, so, really? I mean... So he's doing other things. Football is the saying. lowest thing, the least thing he's worried about. I'm saying you can let your you can let your mind run yeah. and, and and go with all that. So again, his 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 salary for chancellors that's play money. He's got his hands in way <laughs> way more shit than Syracuse. I didn't athletics. say it. <laughs> I'm just saying this, you really this, do a deep dive. That's why powerful. Are these two that's power. In charge of that's power. That's why they're in charge. Right. That's your answer. And good research on that. But it's because they're powerful people. That's he's a powerful person. They are collecting Wild, a paycheck. And Look, Wild Hack is his alumni, yes, man. If you can if you can collect a paycheck that big and not do anything and allow yourself to have all these other jobs and have your hands in all these other cookie jars and the people just allow it, why the hell wouldn't you? 
I mean, what the hell, you know? I ain't got to do shit. I got my job. Do you know, though, man, yeah. dude, this is really bad. You know, the atmosphere isn't great. Your record's not great. Yeah. And I mean, like I said, I'm I'm looking at it like that type of situation, right, is that you can definitely have your opinion that we need to go somewhere else. But just, you know, when you look at it, you start to, you know, and it, through a microscope and you start doing research like that and seeing where these guys are coming from. Um, Dino's more Dino <laughs> Dino's more qualified to be the head coach than these two are to be the chancellor oh, or well, without a the doubt. athletic director. Yeah, I think we, we so I don't, I'm not even sure if we needed the deep dive to even prove that theory. No, you know, you just got to throw a little bit of just facts and some stuff that come with it to kind of give people a little bit of context because I think some people just think, oh, AD, yeah, well, he must be, you know, he must be in, involved in athletics and administration. Like, no. He was a producer in programming, like, at ESPN. He got this job because he's an alumni. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that's pretty much all there is to know. Uh, Matt on Twitter, speaker forever, hold yourself. Hello. Is he there? Hello. You got to unmute yourself. All right. Going once, going twice. Sorry, Matt. Um, all right. Let's see. Rob on Twitter. How's it going today? Mute or forever, hold yourself, buddy. You can now speak. Go ahead. Uh oh. Maybe we have a problem. Maybe that's what the problem. Maybe there is a problem with that because I've got nothing. Mm. I do not hear you. Let's try this again. Hold on a second. Hold on. Here we go. Here we go. All right, Rob. Try it now. No. Do not know what's happened here. Hold on, let's try this one. Matt, try it again. There we go. Matt's there. Okay. All right. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay, perfect. So, I kind I agree with Tony um, with the chancellor. Like I'm uh, first off, you guys nobody's mentioned yet that he's a Georgetown grad. So, yep, that's I mean, yep. that's first and foremost. But that's I, Syracuse is like, they, they want to be like an Ivy league school. So they're investing like a lot of money into academics and stuff. And if, if they don't start putting more money toward the football program, then we're not going to get invited into the power two because we, we don't spend like a power program and every decision that we should be making going forward should be geared toward trying to get into one of those. Or we're just going to say, you know what? We don't want that extra seventy million dollars in TV revenue when something happens with the ACC. So every decision going forward should be geared toward that. And if they fall short of that, then that's fine. But the effort was made. I mean, we we started out with a big hole when we decided not to participate in the college football arms race around the year two thousand ish when that started happening and football buildings and everything started blowing up. And the football team was still good, but we just didn't want to participate in it, and we couldn't re win recruiting battles because of it. I will say that, uh, I mean, it doesn't sound like Joe is that big of a Wild Hack guy. I I do like John Wild Hack, um, but most of the reason that I like John Wild Hack is because I feel like he has been able to raise money to try to put – money toward a football building and the dome upgrades and that is in spite of the university so while the university is not trying to spend money on sports and they haven't for years and i think that, that was all donors too and maybe he raised it yeah. or whatever but i mean oh, yeah, it's all yeah, donor yeah. money no you're 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 right you're right it was all donor money but he's been a force in raising 
that donor money. Well, why, why wasn't he a force, though, yeah. Matt? I'm sorry to cut you off. Why wasn't he a force, though, in getting the NIL program started? Because he felt like he was too above the fray to even get down and start doing anything about it two years ago. And now here we are. We're way behind the eight ball on this. And, you know, now we're, we're struggling to catch up. And we're in the situation we're in because it, it, we're so far behind. I mean, that's great that he got the facility. It is. It's great. Whatever. I mean, think about what a third of that money would have done in NIL. He's raising all that money. I mean, he could have been, we could have been well on our way to some serious, some serious payments being made to some, some, you know, very um, special athletes. Yeah. I mean, and the money will come, by the way. If you bring the athletes, the money will come. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, it, it's, so, there's no doubt about it. And I mean, like I said, I think what they did with the dome, I think they screwed up. I think they screwed up with that dome. I think they could have done something a little bit more niche for well, the area. I mean, think about think about it like this. I mean, we uh, the original plan was to have a retractable roof on the dome, and they couldn't secure enough public funds, tax dollars, to do it. Meanwhile, over well, it shouldn't be paid for by the public now. anyway. I mean, uh, well, yeah, but over at Texas A and M, they did uh, they did uh, upgrade to their facility or their their stadium, which was more money than ours, and that was a hundred percent private funded. And we like we don't have oil money running through <laughs> us the way that you yeah. in the south. So I mean, it's just I mean we have kind of limited resources. I think he's done a really nice job of raising money to get some of that those facilities done and to get the dome upgrades done when in the past athletic directors just haven't been able to move the needle on it and we're actually seeing some progress. So and and what does like it do the for the betterment of in the past? What, what? Like the athletic directors in the past could not get that type of investment. And he's going outside of the university to do it because it's the only way to do it because he's fighting the administration for funding. I, it, from, from an outside perspective, it feels like that. I mean, you had the Lally Complex. He got a twenty-five million dollar donation, like in hand. He's selling, he's selling some of this stuff to our donors, and actually, like we're we're breaking fundraising records because of it. Now, I understand that. I understand your point, like with NIL and everything. And like behind the eight ball with it, like I, that's a whole nother mess. Like I, I'm on board with you guys on that. Like 100%. Like we should be out in front doing things and leading the pack. And it's just, well, he, he acted like he, with it. he, he acted in the beginning that he was just too good for it. Like we weren't like, we were just too morally sound to even bother with such nonsense, you know, and, I, and <laughs> And obviously, yeah. like, that's not true. First of all, it's not true. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Second of but all. I think, I think he's a good guy. I, yeah, know? I'm not. He's I'm a not, likable guy. I'm not attacking anyone's character. Less, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I think he's more or less just he doesn't seem, when you look at him, he just doesn't seem to be qualified. Like, yeah, he's a nice guy. He can get some money. Um, but other than that, the decisions that are made and, and the control that it seems like he has over certain things. I mean, again, the way that everything's handled PR wise by certain things and I don't know. It's just, it's very difficult for me because at the end of the day, it's hard for me to judge a coach because you could be a good coach but have a crap athletic director or a, or a crap chancellor that doesn't give you the resources needed, and you're not going to be successful. So it's it's just – I'm just trying to open up the eyes of the fact that there's – sometimes that, that comes from somewhere else. It's hard to – it's hard to judge a person when the leadership isn't there. So, yeah, and I I agree with you, but I mean realistically, who, I, I, who is Syracuse going to be able to get for an athletic director when Mark Coyle like looked the part, like did good, and then found out that the university wasn't going to invest a dime and bolted. So I mean, he, you had to have somebody who was going to be able to fundraise because the university was not about to take away money from their from their academic side and you had to raise the money yeah so i mean so but you can ask that same as far as that i mean right but you could ask that same you could ask that same question about the coach the next coach now then too right and then you talk about i mean because you have all these uh these fans out here thinking that we deserve better but based upon what you just said that's settling right 
It's, we're, it, settle, it's we're settling on, on the athletic director that's going to be able to do the best that they can because no legit athletic director is going to come here because he knows he doesn't have the support. So you could pretty much say that the next head coach is going to do the same thing now that we know, right? I mean, and I, I know that what, you're on board we, with us. I know that you understand too, but yeah, this is this is my mentality of going to these other fans that think that Dino's the problem and we're just going to bring in some hot shot coach and things are going to change. Well, Dino Dino was a very good coach, but like he had his he had his demons. Like number one, I thought that I thought that his penalties were just out. Like we we were breaking penalty records in games and stuff, and like that's a hundred percent coaching. Like pre snap penalties and stuff, and then just the injuries that that we're getting, uh, like. Oh, Rhino just, just, with his knee and and Cisco like we we don't have the depth. Usually our usually our starters are good enough to perform at like an ACC level, and the, a lot of the players that we have need some time in the strength and conditioning program in order to be built up to that level. Uh, but we're getting good athletes; they just they just need some time, and that's our second and third string. But we, we lose a guy like Rhino, and you know that matters. And you lose a guy like Cisco, and that matters. And then after we play Clemson with our six and zero start, we lose our entire offensive line. Like that matters. I think that we we got to look at the turf, you know, because we're getting a lot of non contract injuries. Like seems like more than other teams are, and losing star players, and our turf is causing a lot of knee problems, and we need to like we're a university we can figure out a better turf like something that is not doesn't have <coughs> that like it's kind of closer to grass as far as as far as uh or is grass shoe the friction between the shoe that we're wearing and the turf that we have so that we're not having as many injuries you know I, yeah. I, but they just got a nutritionist too what two years last year it was last year, so I mean, you're not going to see the fruits of that labor. Oh and just no! Have but they should have had right? one. They should have had one. You know, just like they should already had a facility. Twenty years ago, they didn't need to get twenty five million dollars from Wally, right? Yeah. Um, and, and you know that too is that's a that's a lot of that's a lot of teams, man. I mean, you look at Duke. Duke looked like a top ten team earlier. Lost their quarterback, and now they're six and five. Yeah. So, yeah. Riley Leonard was going was about to come here too. So that kind of uh, he's a tremendous athlete. Oh yeah, I know. So, um, Matt, I follow his recruiting. Also, I wanted to add to. Um, I think that our next our next coach should be somebody with like a uh, unique offense. So, like they do at Wake Forest with like the mesh uh, that they run. Nobody else runs that, and they've been pretty good. And they actually recruit worse than like statistically than we do. But they've been pretty good, like with Hartman and all that so if we were doing something unique then we can then beat teams that might have more talent than us because they're not used to seeing our system um one of the things that constantly runs through my mind is a double tight spread i'd love to be able to run a double tight spread here because we have success recruiting h type tight ends and we don't have a lot of success recruiting slot guys usually our slot guys are just guys that uh, we're their only power five offer. So, but with H type tight ends, we have a lot of success recruiting them. Um, like Mahar, when we got him, he had some pretty major power five offers. Uh, I know that he hasn't, hey, he's been injured, but, um, and the other guy that transferred to Utah, uh, he got here, found out he was going to block, and then left uh, Utah, uh, but something like they used, the Patriots used to run with Gronk and Hernandez, I think would be very successful here, and it would be very unique. Nobody else runs a double tight spread. So that's that's my final thoughts on it. But I hope I uh, appreciate you guys, and thanks for having me on. Yeah, uh, Matt, insightful yeah, thanks, as always, man. man. Appreciate it, buddy. Take care. Yep. Don't be a stranger. Yep, Mike. Uh, all right, we got. We're we're gonna do one more. Oh no, he's not there anymore. Oh, he is there. Rob, if you want it, if you want, there we go. Um, let's see, one more. All right, Rob, let's try this again, man. Sorry, I wanted to try to give you another shot here. Um, just unmute, and you should be good, hopefully. Okay. There he is. Okay. I don't know what happened. Sorry about that. Sounds good. 
You know, I, I, I was debating on this speak, but uh, Matt covered pretty much a lot of things I wanted to say. is like, you have to remember, you know, as far as like the priority of, uh, of, of the university, you know, it's not necessarily a football school. It's a, it's a university. And um, that's, yeah. you know, that's just what it is. Uh, football, you know, obviously we're passionate about it, but, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of things that they have going on. And it's just not that. I will say that, you know, Wild Hack is doing a great job. You know, when he came, he, he came on board after Dino. Um, let's see, you know, this is going to be his mark on it. There was no investment in football prior to him the way there is now. You know, it takes time to get the Lally Center planned and developed. You know, you got to pitch that. And, you know, they finally had groundbreaking. And that, that, that takes years, unfortunately. That's the real life. But we're moving in the right direction on that. So I think there's a lot of positive things. You know, Dino, everyone agree, he was a great guy. He was a great coach as far as the players. You know, the players had him, and they, they bought into him. Uh, and again, he was, you know, obviously time management, uh, some questionable decisions, but, you know, do you kick a field goal or do you go for it? You know, flip a coin, you know. You know, he's going to get criticized for, for whatever decision he makes in some cases. Pretty much. And, uh, you know, so things like that. But, you know, yeah, when you don't have the depth and the injuries. And, again, NIL, look at uh, Bayheim's wins being taken away because of NCAA violations. They kind of took a wait-and-see attitude, you know, test the waters on that. Hopefully they're doing a lot, uh, you know, apparently uh, they're – NIL is in a lot better shape now than it has been. So again, moving in the right direction. You know, a lot of people give you know crap for like whatever the thing with Weitzman. We don't know the behind the scenes details on that. You know, uh, and what did he do other than bringing the the high profile people? You know, yeah, he he put out an offer for a million dollars for a five star uh, athlete to come. That's not enough. You know, I, that's I, not going to do it. I th- <laughs> I think Weitzman's. Weitzman was all about Weitzman, which is why I don't, yeah. I don't care that the ties there are cut. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying. I'm not attacking anybody's character. Just clearly, to me, my opinion, the whole gimmick with the celebrity um, trips to the dome for basketball games was that was about him boosting his, you know, status. And, and and that's I think what a lot of and, that, and that's not to say he doesn't care about the sport, doesn't care about the school and the athletes, but it's a smart move. He's a businessman. Weitzman's no, no, about no. Weitzman. I, I agree a hundred percent. I'm not criticizing him as well, but again, I don't know if it necessarily had a huge impact on the team. I don't think it did. You're talking about we're talking about some of these collectives doing multi million dollars. Uh, donations. We're talking big money. We're not talking paying one one five star athlete's salary for a year. We're we're talking you know way beyond that. That's a that's a great start, but on a that's a small scale. We need to focus yeah. more on divvying out money how it should be done in large sums, not about paying one superstar an exorbitant amount of money to play for a year or whatever the case is a year or whatever the hell you know uh they they yeah. d- contractually yeah. decide upon or whatever i just don't think that that was that was a early stages decent way to i think look at it but at the end of the day i think that the orange united collective um is going to be the way to go you get everybody involved in that and you get to earmark where your money goes and then you have the big donors too on top of it and we don't know their names by the way okay so there's adam weitzman we know him well there's plenty of other big donors that are doing you know seven figure donations and we don't know their names no, 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 I agree. But again, you, you know, the facilities, you know, how long till the Lally complex is going to be completed? Two more years? Years. And that's, that's, yeah, and if not longer, because, you know, construction always takes longer. But again, we're at least getting some stuff done that 10 years ago, you know? Yeah, it's so, going to take a long time for that degree, to pay off, though. There, there's definitely a degree of catch up going on yeah absolutely um, i think that's the name of the game right now is catch up yeah well i think so. weitzman was the big thing with that was i think it was the way that the look that that like wild hack had as far as like 
Wild Hack was talking about how NAL and when it first started wasn't really like he didn't seem interested, and then here we are, and we see this guy that's willing to do this and bring in athletes, and he's like, oh, I want nothing to do with it. And so to me, it was the look of it, you know. And then when you take when you stand back and look at them, you know, kind of cutting ties with him, now you can kind of you know have a little bit more perspective and understand that it really wasn't that big of a deal. I think there's some fans that would have liked to have had an explanation. Um, oh, you're but, never going to get anything explained no. to you, Joe. You're plebe. You think you deserve an explanation for anything? You, you, no. you plebe. Yeah, just um, but I'm gonna. But they're gonna take the money from my paycheck. Um, no, but <laughs> they so, will take the money. Yeah. So I mean, to me, it's just it's tough because what this NIL has done is they've brought economics into it, and to what Matt was saying, um, there's cities and there's states and there's places where there's a a lot more alumni, a lot more money, and you know, a lot more livable, you know, more reasonable place to live as far as um, you know, cost of living. So um, there's fans places that can just dole out a certain amount of money, you know, four or five figures a year if they wanted to to help support their team. And I just don't see Syracuse right now in that situation. Yeah, uh, Rob, appreciate you, buddy. Don't be a stranger, okay? Thanks. All right, um, Yeah, look. Uh, hey, look, by the way, appreciate everybody in the spaces. And, you know, the spaces isn't a huge thing. Uh, as far as listenership goes, it's not, a, it's not a huge gathering. It's probably tough to garner uh, a lot of attention on a Sunday afternoon anyways, but I'm proud of what we do when there's 10 to 15 people in there. I'm happy with that. And, it, and, it, and you get a lot of the hardcores in there. Everybody that just spoke on the show is, is, is for me, considered some of the hardcore fans. And uh, we appreciate not just listening there, but obviously coming on and, and saying your piece. And yeah. if I could do the... Get this, a different do, perspective, right? Yeah, absolutely. And if I could do the... And it's always insightful. I don't, I don't know. There's not too many people who have ever come on here and said anything stupid. You know, so you're getting the, the the brightest of the brightest of fans, and they come on and they make they make good points every time. And, yeah, and, we're, and, and I, we're not in Syracuse, right? So I mean, they right. might have they know they might be a little bit more in the know um, whether they have people that you know as far as connections or in the know of just certain things that are going on with with uh, the university. So, right? so, anyways, I just want to thank everybody for not just listening, but obviously participating. But the listeners on on Spaces is good enough for me. I just love the fact that. You can come on and say your piece, and though it's not a perfect system, uh, it generally it works pretty damn good. So, uh, before we let uh, before I let you guys go, because I'm really pressed for time right now, and I thought this was gonna be long. I just didn't think it was gonna be this long, <laughs> uh, and that's usually the story. Um, look, Syracuse plays Tennessee. What seven thirty their time? So it's like two thirty here, right? Is that correct? Uh, it's like two thirty in the afternoon tomorrow. Is that right? God, will you give me a God? Give well, me. You should answer. have this. Um, should have this up. Come on, Joe. Yes, yes. It's okay. Two thirty p.m. All the right. afternoon. So it's yes. two it's two thirty here tomorrow. Syracuse can play Tennessee. Tennessee stacked with juniors, seniors, fifth year seniors, and um, I don't have a ton of insight on them because I don't know. I don't know a lot of these players except for the um, Basqui- um Biscovi, Joe who you mentioned uh, earlier uh, in a private conversation. And, you know, as far as, as far as they go, they're really, really, you talk about guard heavy. This freaking team is guard heavy. I don't know what else to say. They got that Adu, 6'11 junior, <laughs> forward, um, pretty, pretty tremendous player. He leads the team in rebounds and blocks. As you can imagine, rebounds 7.3 and blocks. He's, he's pushing three blocks a game. Yeah. Um, so, you know, talented, talented group. Um, the biggest thing for me with this team, and like I said, I don't know a ton about them. I'm just looking at this on paper, is the, uh, is the experience that they have. Like I said, seniors, juniors, and fifth-year seniors make up this team. So... Um, it's going to be a huge test. And by the way, they're seventh currently in the country. And, you know, they yeah. haven't really played anybody, I guess. You know, they did have a tight game, if you want to call it, with Wisconsin. But uh, Tennessee Tech, Wisconsin, and Wolford uh, are all wins. Uh, they they pretty much doubled up Tennessee Tech, as you would imagine. Um, 3-0. and And 
you know, this would be a good test to kind of see where where we where we are with a top ten team. And there's not a whole lot more that you're going to be able to take out of it, I think, other than that, it's, it, without a, a major upset, right? Which just a good chance to yeah. see where Red has this team stacking up against a top ten team because we're going to play top ten teams in our conference. So this is this is the moment to to um, be able to go out there and see what they can do, see what it looks like. Obviously, this team's gritty. They're 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 talented. They're gritty. They're determined. They're really, really um, surprising in some aspects. So, uh, Joe, if you want to give specifics, you can. But I mean, uh, thank you for for leaving the uh, the difficult last name for me. So, <laughs> what Netch? Is it Netch? Yeah, I think it's Netch. I would have said Necht. Uh, I got to go Netch because just because it sounds right. Well, I've always told you guys, you know, if you say the name fast and confident, no one's ever going to question you anyway. Netch. Dalton Netch. 6'6", <laughs> six, six senior, 240 pounds. Guard. Transfer out of Northern Colorado. Yeah. Got a yeah. couple big transfers, too. Yeah, well, I mean, that guy right there is really the main one. He's led the team in scoring um, all three games, and obviously this is his first season. Um, With the balls. Yes. So and you looked at 21, 22 just two years ago. He was averaging 8.9 points last year. He jumped up to 20 points a game, and he's pretty much right there as well. So, and you say guard-oriented, but, like, they're still like tall. They're tall guards, six three, six six, six six. Josiah, jo- Josiah Jordan James, third leading scorer. Um, you know he's six six. Jordan Ganey, averaging thirteen points a game. Nope, he's the other transfer. Of, uh, yeah, South, South Carolina. Carolina, Upstate. Um, so their leading scores oh. is that, chair, that stool was loud. I apologize about yeah, that. Yeah, it was super loud. Know, um, their leading scores are the transfers that obviously were great scores in just smaller schools last year, and so far so good after three games. Um, so, uh, yeah, this team is also a very good defensive um, def- defensive team. So it looks to me like for at least the first three games, they've got you know six guys who average twenty plus minutes and other guys the Kai Ziegler that uh it's about 17 minutes but again you know two of those games Wofford was close around halftime but um they pulled away so I don't know um they're probably gonna go anywhere between six to eight deep um so yeah it's gonna be interesting um I know that they're still trying to I listen to some videos with Rick Barnes or coach and um you listen to videos or you watch videos I listened to a video. It was a video, but I listened to it. I well, you listen to it and watch, or you just listen to it? No, I just listened to it because I'd like to multitask. Um, so, yes. Fair. I just you was know, trying the, to be clear of what was going on. No, we're yeah, trying to no, get all get a visual. So No, you're just trying to make me like an idiot. No, you were cooking uh, beef stew, listening to videos. I totally get it, dude. Uh, okay, good, good. Um, but, yeah, no, they're still trying to figure stuff out. So, you know, we're not going to see – this isn't going to be the best – you know, this isn't end of the season Tennessee, or you know, you know, in the middle of the SEC schedule. Um, but nonetheless, this is probably one of the better defensive teams that we're going to be playing against. So, um, yeah, that's what I worry about. You know, try to steal one. If we're going to steal one, it's probably going to be this one over a Gonzaga or Purdue. Um, and if we lose our first two games, then you know we'll end up playing Chaminade for the seventh place. Um, and that'll be a win. I mean, dude, uh, it's kind of a stacked. It's kind of stacked against. It's super Syracuse. stacked. I just wish that we were on like the same side as Chaminade. To yeah, I don't know. No, they. I just done wish that, we though. were in a situation where we could play three of the good teams. But nonetheless, um, these are going to be games that get us ready for not only ready for our conference, um, but also non-conference games against the likes of Georgetown, Oregon, and LSU. So, um, the first two teams that we play regardless of who it is, um, are going to be better than a lot of teams that we played this year. So fair. Okay. Um, anyways, we will, we will, um, get back here when we can get back here. And normally I tell y'all when we're coming back, but I don't know when we're coming back. So with that said, this is pretty much two episodes. So listen to half tomorrow and then listen to the other half later. And it's be like something new. You know what I mean? Probably oh, could, yeah. probably could just cut out the whole first open, the whole first segment having to do with Georgia Tech. Like everybody's 
I feel like Georgia Tech happened a year ago at this point. So <laughs> I don't think anyone gives a crap what we think. Not that we even gave many thoughts on it. Sure. Uh, but it is the last ever Coach Babers montage, which was looking back on it, maybe a slight chance that maybe he had a, a good idea. It might have been too. It wasn't a lot there. It was only six minutes. Those usually run 13 minutes, 12, 13 minutes. So, yeah. Anyways, and but you're it's in, also enemy also territory. Possible. I know. But they still, yeah. though, this year surprisingly have had like real um, post game pressers set up after these away games, not just an interview in a hallway with a bunch of people with cell phones recording answers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's been a little bit different this year. But anyway, uh, that's all we got. I want to thank everybody again, all of you who listen, all of you who uh, get in the spaces and participate in the show, everybody leaving comments. Uh, just enough can't be said about you guys. I appreciate it. I really, really do. Yes. And um, look, man, heads up. We'll get this thing figured out. Someone will. Our heads are going to roll. So for Joe, for Sean, we're out. We'll see you soon. Peace.